Welcome back to the CrashBots devlog series. So in this episode, we've made some absolutely absurd progress. We worked on global fans, global PvP, offline loot, offline PvP, replays. Um, I moved all the way across the country even. So this has been a, a lot in the works, but finally have the next episode out. So enjoy. I'm in the process of updating the bot generation algorithm. Right now I'm working on actually the wheels first. So it'll pick a random body that is basically good enough for your level before it would just choose the one with the best stats which shocker it was the big wheel so a lot of the bots would just spawn with the big wheels but um now essentially each wheel has a a spot that it likes to be so if i go ahead and just kind of go through here you can see the smaller wheels tend to like being in the front and the bigger wheels tend to like being in the back to elaborate further essentially each a uh, wheel type has a function tied to it and the function basically is where the wheel likes to be on a bot relative to like the x-axis so uh, zero would be all the way at the back which would be right here and one would be all the way at the front so basically it'll check the x like where um the node is let's say the node is at 0.4 okay so the biggest wheel stomp would have a seven or seventy six percent about uh, basically score at that position. So given it's at you know point four forty percent of the way forward, um, and then you know basically if it's all the way forward, you know over at like point eight or whatever, uh, it doesn't even get a ten percent score. And this changes drastically depending on the wheel. So then the next wheel over, this is what it looks like. This is like the middle wheel. It's kind of just good wherever. Second smallest wheel is the reverse of the second biggest wheel. You can see that here. The smallest wheel, it is the reverse of the biggest wheel. And uh, so basically, you know, we, we loop through the wheels here uh, using their function and the nodes X position and basically get a score value. And then pretty simply, we are multiplying the score uh, here we get the, the the score and multiplying it essentially by the level um, with some factors played in all right so it's been a bit but I have been designing a bunch of UI that will focus a lot on the profile and essentially clan system my goal with these two systems is to make the game a lot more social. Roblox tends to really like social games and they like to promote social games. It, it's actually one of uh, the key metrics in your number of home recommendations you get. You'll be able to inspect things on player's profile like you know what bot they have, the parts on their bot, and see like stats. What's really interesting about this is I want everything to work globally. So what that means is you don't need to be in the same server as someone to look at their profile. Uh, or their clan, which I'll, I'll talk about in just a bit. So you might see this number here uh, in this icon. This is essentially your ELO. PvP, head-to-head, uh, -head, your, your rating. These icons I actually made a long time ago, like six months ago, for a different game. And here are the, the icons that I made. Um, but then I never ended up actually using them. So this is... Uh, and I love the way they look. So I was like... Okay, well, I already have all these icons, and I plan on doing a ranked ladder, so this is, like, perfect. I don't need to go through. I spent a lot of time on these, actually, but I don't need to go through and make them, because uh, I already have them. If you hover over anyone, you're able to click on them. You kind of see double-click to view, and you can click on yourself to view your own profile. So, if I double-click, this is what it looks like in-game. You see the live preview of your bot. Uh, you can also see the actual individual parts with clans. Essentially, it's, you know, a typical clan that you'd see from, like, Clash Royale. For example uh, you'll be able to join a clan it'll show your members that are in it um, you'll have it'll be sorted by elo and it will be like a ladder ranking for clans as well so that clans can compete you'll have a clan chat which you'll be able to share things like replays which i'm really really excited about this clan chat will save between sessions and uh, it's also global so you can chat with your clan members whenever wherever i went ahead and added these side buttons here these icons will almost definitely change if i go into the clan menu here you can see i sent some chats earlier and you can see basically they were a while ago it's kind of faded so you can't really see so as you can see here we now have a working uh, text chat that then sends to a literal uh, message in the chat along with 
promoting and demoting, which then sends also to the, the chat, which is really cool, um, along with directly accessing and uh, directly accessing profiles and uh, through globally through the clan menu, which is absolutely amazing. So cool. I'm working on this new idea for the loot, which would essentially be like loot slots. Cool animation here. And this is the animation and loot slots that I ended up going with. Um, it, I really like the way it looks. I, I think it turned out absolutely amazing. But unfortunately, I actually ended up going back to the old way. I, I realized that I really disliked the way that that loot felt. Um, it, it really felt horrible to play with. And although the tech and the look was absolutely amazing, um, I'm actually really sad about it. Uh, it just did not feel good to play with and it felt so clunky. I spent a long time trying to make a UI for basically the part bonuses uh, or conditional part bonuses. Um, and here's where, here were a couple different options. I was kind of experimenting a lot. I ended up sticking with this um, and made a couple different versions of it. So when I hop into game now, you're able to see if I go to my parts that we have multiple specific part bonuses. I went ahead and made multiple new tiers of the actual parts. So we have the orange, green, blue, and purple tiers, and each one looks slightly different, a little upgraded, tier to tier. Um, nothing crazy, but we're gonna have multiple new tiers past this, and then additionally, certain parts unlock at uh, specific levels as well. So like, for example, you actually can't get the Tesla immediately, even though there is a model for it. Um, same thing with the laser right now, you can't get that immediately, and then there's a couple bodies that you can't get either. Within your clan, I, I had to end up uh, changing the global chat to be quick chats only, um, just because it the, it goes against Roblox's terms of service to actually type in custom chats and messages across uh, global servers because there's no way to actually verify if people are allowed to chat uh, through to each other. Um, which I know there are other games that have global chats and clan chats and whatnot that um, do have it and are technically breaking terms of service, but don't really want to risk it. Um, additionally, we have this request button here. So when you click it, basically your inventory will pop up and it will allow you to request basically uh, people to um, donate fuses to you. So donate upgrades to you. So if I, let's just say, wanted uh, this body to have free upgrades. I could request it and very similar to Clash Royale, you are able to donate um, parts to essentially fuse it, upgrade it. So if I were to go here, this is the part that I just requested. If someone were to donate a part, it is the same thing as them essentially fusing that part for you, except it benefits both players. Um, it benefits both players because they get to donate it and by donating they get um, the, they get uh, currency and XP, and then it also benefits you because you get free fuses, uh, free upgrades. Here is a donation UI that would pop up when you receive a donation and kind of display new stats that happen. I've been spending a lot of time on the PvP aspect of the game. So PvP in this game will work a little bit different. Um, it's, it's not live PvP in the sense of there's teleporting two players to the same server and you battle, whatever. It's not like that. Um, it's more like Clash of Clans where essentially you can have a player offline, you have their bot, and you can then attack their bot. And then there's gaining elo rating uh, dependent on uh, if you succeed or not. So I, I mocked these up. These were actually generated by ChatGPT. Um, and then I put it into my own style and uh, kind of mocked these up. Eventually, uh, show the actual global leaderboards as well with all the ranks down here. So then in game, this is what it would look, then look like. Uh, I made these red chests. I don't know if I really like them or not, but you have it. Um, and you have your bot here, stats, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then the actual ladder, which if I click view, you can see we have a, uh, a ladder here with just me, but, um, and then all the ranks down here. And uh, there's seasonal like resets. Um, and their seasons are very short. So the seasons are three days, and uh, every three days that the season ends, you get rewards depending on where you end. Um, and you don't lose any elo unless you're above 4,000, which is the legend league, um, the legend rank. 
players above 4k will be essentially brought down to a lower value each season, um, so then they're able to fight for the top ranks again. I'm working on the uh, back end of clan slash elo slash profiles, and I'm getting a little lost. This has lots of moving parts in it, and lots of services, lots of um, data stores, memory stores, uh, caches, etc, etc. So um, basically what you see here is every essentially rectangle, rounded rectangle is a some store of some sort. It, it could be a data store, it could be a memory store, it could be a cache store which is a data store and a memory store and a uh, essentially a local cache table as well. What happens when a match ends and what happens when someone joins and this is in the realm of P PvP. So. Um, when a match ends, we need to do two things. You need to update the match history and update their ELO. Um, when we update their ELO, you'll see here it goes to the global ELO, uh, essentially order data store and update the value there, which then other services can listen to the ELO updated signal and update theirs accordingly. So when a player's ELO updates, their clan ELO also needs to update. Um, because a clan is ranked based off of its clan's total elo. Um, and then obviously when someone views your profile and stuff like that, we want it their elo to be there as well. Additionally, if they are in the server, so if you are essentially the person that just battled um, and you are in a server, which you are, uh, it will then need to update your, your persistent data that everything is on um, this isn't necessarily going to be the source of truth, but it will be a easily accessible, um, here's your ELO, um, this is what, you know, where your bot data is saved, where, what level you are, um, but we don't want to have our ELO there because we don't want to have to grab the entire player data anytime we want to check what someone's ELO is. It needs to be in a global ELO, just order data store. All right, now all of the systems are working together. So if I go ahead and find opponent, it will find an opponent, actually show ELO and all of that, and you'll see if I then win the match. So through just a bit of testing, we were running into memory usages uh, limits already, which kind of sucks, but I was a little worried about this happening, but I wasn't uh, entirely sure what the limits were and uh, turns out it's about 64 kilobytes per um, player essentially and what was happening is the profiles were about one kilobyte each and then to essentially store a match you essentially need to have two profiles because the bot is most of the profile anyways um, so it'd be you know if you have match history of 20 games whatever that's two kilobytes per that's like 40 and then there's your own profile and then if you're looking at other things yada 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 uh eventually you know we're right on the edge and then i think it was kind of backing us off sometimes i, I actually got an email <laughs> which is pretty funny um so what i ended up doing is i wrote a compression uh algorithm kind of thing so if i open up this over here um not biggest but basically this is what a profile looks like in like code right um it's about 1.2 kilobytes for one profile as you can see here uh 1.3 even um and then it, i compress i compress it into essentially this right it's encoded it's using buffers which i've actually never used before i've used string pack before um but that was before buffers even existed. So we have this uh, encoded, which is now 200 bytes uh, from essentially 1300. Um, so that is what a six and a half times less data. So that's pretty awesome. And then to prove that it works, basically we decode it or we encode it and then we decode it and we get the exact same data back, which you can see it's printing equal true down here, which is just me doing a, uh, a deep uh, comparison of the table and they are the same so everything works and uh, pretty happy with the results
and now PvP actually does work. So if I go ahead and click find opponent, it will search and eventually find opponent near my elo, and then we will battle it out, like so. And I end up beating this one. You'll see my elo then increases, and we actually get a, a nice little log down here. Um, each day you get a daily win track like here and the rewards increase as uh, it, it goes on these are like PvP crates essentially um, And then I can search again try and find a new opponent um, Similarly to clash of clans um, Oh wow uh, Similarly to clash of clans it will um, Essentially apply like a lock to players that were recently in battle So they can't lose like a million elo overnight by just getting farmed um, I'm gonna get some out of this here. We're probably gonna get destroyed, but you'll see um, th There aren't many people on the actual test server right now, so I I I'll lose some pretty easily So then there's also the shield system similar to clash of clans where you could then you know, Have shields by doing some actions applying shields or potentially buying one in the shop Which basically means it prevents people from attacking you when you're offline meaning you don't lose rating offline or uh, well, potentially lose rating and you can even watch your replays um, that you did in PvP. So if you click on your profile, you'll see there's now a couple options here. Inbox, tax, defense. Uh, these icons will change uh, just using placeholders now. And you can then watch replay of different attacks that you just did. So you can take a look at this one that I just did in the last clip. And you'll see it will replay the exact same thing, which is really cool. Um, and then the defense, I think, are more interesting because they happened when you were away. Um, you can kind of take a look. Let's see what happened. Why did I lose to this guy? Take a replay. Oh, he is extremely strong. That's why I lost. <laughs> like I said before, the elos are, are very close together because there's so few people. Um, but I actually went against this guy. So let's take a, a replay here and see see what happened. Oh, okay. It actually looked pretty close, but I was able to luckily one shot him with my lasers. And now save slots work. So I can go to a different save slot, uh, put some some things down and then when I go back and forth to different save slots they are functional. I wasn't loving how the battle uh, bottom bar looked so I ended up revamping it just a little bit. I uh, really hated this X icon actually. Um, so I revamped it just a little bit, used kind of the style that I already had and went more for like a Clash of Clans battle look and this is what it looks like actually in game so you're just able to skip and it actually does work here skip to different bots, that you, then eventually you find one that you think you'd win, and it gets more expensive as you go. Maybe I'll win this one, we'll see. Uh, I got pretty decent lasers here, okay, nice. <laughs> and uh, then it, you notice when you start the battle, this will kind of fade out until uh, you hover over it. Um, and then additionally, the skip button will not exist anymore. I added some offline loot to the game, so now if you're offline, basically there is loot that you can grab um, based off of your level and how far or how long you were gone. Pretty cool, and uh, sticking with the, the Roblox trend of offline loot. 